Hello there everyone and welcome back to Old Rural Blues. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha and right now we need to talk about this little event on screen Tales from Afar. Mexico is not the only land of titans and fallen empires. Traders from across the north are a frequent sight in our lands, and they bring with them tales of adventure and heroism that put the Atzlani Jaguar warriors to shame. A few of these stories have become local favorites, but as the water merchants gather around the fireplace, which one shall we hear today? The Chosen One? The Great Calculator? Do you have any news stories by any chance? Ah, uh, the Great Calculator sounds like a lock, maybe. Chosen One is obviously the Chosen One, but maybe... Do we have news stories? That'd be kind of cool. We have some comments to go through, as you can see, and actually I've reloaded the game. We've lost a lot of guys. My bad, because we over got overran a couple times. So, uh, a couple comments. Uh, so basically, we were getting overran because our divisions are not fast, because I added mobile fortifications. Uh, okay, well... Um, um, when we look over here... No, the speed is still the same. I guess technically it doesn't hurt us that much. It made us go down by... 0.3, really 0.4 kilometers per hour. So actually, we didn't go that much slower than usual. I guess it just... I don't know. I thought... Because yesterday we saw... The max speed would go down to like 2.7. Okay, well, I guess that was probably why. We still got overran anyway. Because of infrastructure and probably bad weather and stuff like that. It is a desert if you see so, but still. Um, okay, that was one of the comments. Like, you know, because we added the mobile fortifications, we slowed us down, which is why, which is why we got overran. Um, someone asked when we do goring in TNO. Eventually... Not sure when, but eventually. Hopefully we don't get overran here, which would really suck. But uh, I'm still going to be doing this off-screen a little bit more. And um, someone did ask, would normal infantry benefit from our land auction more than ghoul infantry? I'm not really sure. Let's take a look. Fire teams, uh, all, all the army gets organization, in which if I'm looking on screen here, infantry gets it. Is there Colorado Super Mutants, ghoul infantry platoons get it as well. So, fighting support weapons, weapon infantry get more heart attack. Actually, there's not a lot of buffs to infantry, just period. Okay, that's interesting. No, I think we still get the same buffs. It doesn't really matter. Uh, that we, Ghouls versus normal infantry, they're almost exactly the same thing. Walking infantry, ghoul infantry, platoons versus infantry. So, uh, I think that's pretty much the same. Um, and someone says, when are we going to do the Think Tank eventually? I was wondering if you guys would prefer it if we started off as a Mojave chapter and then flipped over to the Think Tank, or just start with a game rule and have the Think Tank start from the beginning. But that's mostly what I just wanted to ask you guys, for, actually for a while now, but... If there's no other story, I'll see you guys in just a little bit when you've defeated the Zapata group, or at least close to defeating them. Alright everyone, so my apologies, and this is the reason why the video is so short. Apparently, whenever we form Grand the Grand Cartel, or whether it was Zapata or something, um, the game lags so incredibly bad, because I think there's a memory leak after we form the nation. When I play TNO in Hoi 4 right now, there's no issue. When I play Victoria 2, there's no issue. However, after we form the uh, Grand Cartel, which obviously I went back to an earlier save right now, um, it lags unbelievably bad. Usually right now, <clears throat> Hoi 4 takes about 40% of my memory usage. And as time goes on, like where we just left off with the, you know, earlier, it would go up to 80, 90, oh, already to 100% of memory usage to the point where you can't even play the, the mod anymore. So I think there's a memory issue at the time of this recording, which is very disappointing because I would like to finish off this campaign with the focuses. So let's just go through the focuses together. I, I apologize that we can't really continue this, but at least let us complete all these focuses. Uh, let's see, auto complete. So I do apologize, like, I almost never do this, but like... Old World Blues isn't perfect, and hopefully, maybe, maybe it's Old World Blues, maybe it's just my computer, but I don't think it is, just because, uh, I've never had this issue before. I've had crashes before, but never, like, memory leaks, so. But yeah, my memory usage went up from 40%, at least at the time it's recording, up to 100%, which is kind of insane with 16 gigs of RAM, but, you know, whatever. Um, if you like to read about these ones, I know already you talked about these, but if you'd like to read these, please go right ahead. I'll give you time to read these, if you'd like to, of course, once again. <clears throat> but yeah. A little disappointing. Hopefully this doesn't happen whenever we play the other cartel as well. So, but I'm going to give it some time before we actually touch that cartel. But, 23rd Century Innovation. Our accumulated efforts to redesign appropriate and outright steal the technology of the Wayson has given us a technological catch-up to the 23rd century. But if we were to go further, we need to decide what to focus our own domestic research on. Let's get lasers. Oh, that's cool. A better grasp of industry is paramount. A better grasp of industry is paramount. Wait. Industry. Why is this here twice? Oh, this is this is support tech, and this is this one is industry. A better grasp of industry is paramount. A better grasp of industry is paramount. These are exactly the same. I personally prefer industry. Support equipment is cool, but infantry is cool as well. But I'll go with that one because we can. 
future tech. There's always something new to discover on the horizon. Well, we ourselves won't really be discovering it, it's a great comfort to know that we can take credit for whatever great strides our indentured scientists can make. Cool. Lose some more recruitable population, but get more research speed and civilized tech category research. Nice. Fear and loathing and hatred. Anger is a powerful motivator, but requires a fire inside the spirit that must be coaxed awake. <clears throat> It matters not who our troops hate, so long as they channel the fury towards our enemies, ghoul hierarchy. Ghouls aren't the best for frontline combat, but their years of experience and reliability make them the perfect commanding officers. Some might call this discrimination, and they'd probably be right, which is very true. Cool. Uh, a better class of villains. I think I already read these, so if you want to read about this one again, please go right ahead. Cool. And then airborne theory, of course. Heavy support. Very cool. And we can't do that one, so hitting compartments. Okay, perhaps a small amount of pre-planning is needed for ship work. Building better, more inconspicuous vessels with greater haulage is our priority with junk boats or gunboats. No need for fancy ship work to extravagant design. If it floats, it's a boat. <clears throat> Blockade runners. A pipe gun on a boat is pretty similar to a pipe gun on land, only that there's a lot of water lying around it if it overheats. Running the Fuerte. The blockade of the Fuerte by the Luchadors has been a sore point and major economic setback, using our upgraded navy to ruck, rust control back from those masked freaks. Will be first step in our eventual revenge against the meathead menace. Cool. And then Navoa contacts. The loss of Navoa was costly, but her presence in the pre province hasn't completely disappeared. There are a few more corrupt officials and traders who chaff against the new ownership, and it's possible we can use the Luchador obsession with freedom against them. Depth cools. While their bodies are not particularly built for aquatic activities, there are some unexpected benefits in the terms of our naval capacity. Ghouls don't need much in terms of supplies and are, are unlikely to catch any illnesses. While, while poorly suited to swimming, they can hold their breath for a remarkably long time, all things considered, and no more pretense. We are now a true ocean faring issue. While some of our boats might have leaks, all of them have very nasty guns, and, and in terms of soft power, this is a sticking point with yeah, ooh, Harbor. Fuerte Harbor. Oh, this one too. Matsalan, we don't own that one, so we can't do that one, which would be nice, but oh well. <clears throat> now, how about Yaqui Harbor? Yaqui would be a perfect river to establish an official trade port, one that can relieve our small little bases and our better regulated incoming goods in the Rio project. The Rio Grande is the lifeblood of northern Mexico, and much of its wealth flows under the hands of the Rio Republic. Rio is quite short on friends in these troubling times. Perhaps we can find a way to wed our diverse nations together. And rancher bribes. The Arizona ranchers are not long for this world, whether it be the appetites of the Legion nor an expansionist Rio. While this bodes ill in the long run for now, it will make them especially weak to our own influence. Not bad. And the best of minds in Mexico. Nationality and patriotism are, are in short supply in the 23rd century by pooling our collective talents together. Our desperate factions can better withstand the encroachments or encroaches of order and justice that seek to destroy our lucrative way of life and tax regulation. Our current system of taxation is barely concealed exhortation, where their subjects being often taxed as many times as their enforcers feel appropriate. Reorganizing our system to a more uniform and perhaps minim minutely less exploitive system will dramatically increase our revenue resource diversification. Scavenging has become a large, secondary industry amongst our smooth-skinned population, who have turned the stripping of pre-war relics into a fine art. But ruins aren't infinite, and we'll need to start properly regulating this practice before the system collapses in on itself. Human resources. It turns out you can put a price on humanity, and that price is quite profitable indeed. Economic legitimacy. With a strong internal economy backing us, our neighbors can no longer dismiss us as uh, simply another group of raiders. We have the heritage, economy, and sheer blood-mindedness to become a powerful force in Mexico. And doing it legit, legitimacy is a curious thing. What some consider to be a standard of civilization is more like an agreed-upon lie. By greasing the hands of power across the region, we can rehabilitate the cartel legacy and become a more or less upstanding member of the international community versus criminal industrial projects. Time spent on things like reputation and infamy is time not spent on profit-making, and there is therefore time wasted. As long as there are fools, cowards, and villains of fleets, the cartel will flourish as it always has, which I kind of I'll do this one instead because I like getting this one. And then uh, we'll start at the bottom, and that'll be it. Rewriting the will. Tlaloc's recent deceasement is a true tragedy, but what's even more tragic is that we didn't get anything out of it. The former lens of that overblown toaster are free pickings, as far as we're concerned, of the only game in town. A generalissimo is a great man, but also a very unstable one, if we are to continue business with him. A more equitable relationship is necessary. Failing that, we'll simply stab in the back like that naive fool he is, the little guys. It's rude to neglect the minor nations of Mexico that have yet to be annihilated by the major powers. We should take the time to fully exploit them before our inevitable tragic demise. And the big picture. Neutrality can be dangerous in these high, strong times, if the current ba power balance is likely to shift. It'd be prudent we align ourselves with the likely winner before we ourselves become a target. But unfortunately, that is all the focuses that we currently have. Let's see. Disable, focus at autocomplete. Um, oh, we didn't have to do focus at no checks. Oh, we didn't do that one because we didn't. Because we technically did that one, but that should be it for us. They might have some events here, maybe, maybe not, but I apologize, guys. I, it basically became unlaggy here for us to play, but we can at least do the only game in town. 
For the past few decades, the Sinaloa cartels have had to play second fiddle to the whims of the Generalissimo. Non-compete clauses, guaranteed markets, and the exclusion of Genta del Sol from cartel operations are but a few of the indignities this unequal relationship foisted upon us, however. With the luchador that threat defeated and the cartels you know, united once more, an opportunity has arisen for us to rectify the situation. While we could use our newfound strength to build a mutual alliance with Genta, the option also exists for us to spread our influence finally there, whether that be by infiltration or form by four more forceful methods. Let's set up shop. Uh, let's do the shop. Cool. But, oh, wait, do we have one more next, maybe? Do we have another one? That'd be kind of cool if we did. Um, oh, we have one here. Okay, cool. So, uh, we do that one. Oh, not TDE bug. That was earlier for seeing if I could just delete the divisions, but with both our economy and industry revitalized, it's time to synchronize uh, these two fields and interconnect them as a proper command economy. But I believe that is it, and once again, I do apologize for this. I usually don't do this in campaigns, but... With a memory leak or just using a way too much memory usage, there's nothing I can really do. But if you enjoyed the video, please do help consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.